Hi everyone, welcome to Stock Talk for July 23rd. Let's zoom in into the SPY uh, chart daily time frame and talk about what's been going on since the last week. So it's been a little time. So here we go. We talked about how we were looking for a continuation move. Typical fashion is this up move followed by a higher low, followed by another higher high, higher low, higher high. And what's been forming in the past few days is a possible scenario of making another higher high. Now, what is this pattern typical of? Well, this is an uptrending pattern on the daily SPY time frame. So remember, we always have to keep the larger time frame in mind. If we start going into nitpicking, uh, 10 minute, 15 minute, 30 minute time frames, then you might see some different charts in there, and that might be valid if you're trading in that time frame. But the big picture here is that the the market still looks positive and it's still moving up in the short term now i'm not discounting the fact that the market can make a turn back down but we need to see some sort of more definitive signals by the bears now when we look at this chart look at these candles look at the magnitude of the candle that was formed on friday here that might have been a troublesome sign, right? But if we, if this was a troublesome sign, first we need bears to close us below the 20 period moving average on the daily time frame. But look at Monday. Instead, we held up in typical fashion, similar to here, similar to here, in which there was no follow through. There was no follow through in these candles, and instead, the bear said, or the bull said, okay, well, you know, we'll just take it and we'll run from there. And that's what we did today. So. Until we can see some follow through the, by the bears, I think the bulls still are in control of this market. Again, this can change, but right now we're not seeing that. Instead, we're seeing an uptrend that wants to break this all time high. Okay, so again, take this one day at a time as things can change, but the pattern is still holding up. I also talked about how, um, remember in the past stock talks, I talked about how we're in 2019 not 2018. So the likelihood that we get something similar to this might not be as high as you think, or it might come higher than you think, right? So because why? Well, sentiment is different over here versus over here. Here, we never experienced a capitulation low, right? Why is that? Well, if you just go off of sentiment, People think, well, we've been in a bull market this entire time. There's no way that we can get into capitulation low. Okay, well, that broke everyone's chain of thought. And now over here, people are thinking, what? Well, we have to do something like this in the near future because we're so high up. And instead, the market is looking more resilient. So we have to take this a day at a time, but the resiliency continues to be there in markets. And that's that. That's the S&P 500. All right. When we look at TVIX or volatility, oh yeah, and you know, a lot of people still are asking me about uh, divergences in the market. So um, I think one of the big divergences out there is the S&P 500 and the IWM or the small caps. So I'm not, again, completely discounting divergences, but the problem with divergences is that you can continue diverging for a very long time until a signal pops out. And that might be way off the road. Uh, and if you think about it, if you keep guessing at where to short, you're gonna be guessing incorrectly many, many, many times. So nine out of 10 times, you're gonna be wrong. That last time you will be right, but how much do you have left at the final time? That's why I don't really rely too much on divergences. I notice them on the charts. I notice them, so what is the divergence? You can see as SPY is making a higher high, and this is a two year time frame. You expect small caps to be rallying, right? Instead, small caps has making be, been making lower highs. So here's the high from small caps, and it's been having a hard time. But uh, I also point out to you know that this is a bull flag pattern, right? So when you look at this bull flag pattern, we expect this to push to the upside, but right now it looks like it's curving lower. Um, so there's not too much to be done in the IWM right now, I don't think, but this is a bull flag. So if we expect this, we expect this to play out to the upside. If we do play this out to the downside, then obviously some trouble for the IWM and the rest of the markets. But right now, you know, I think everything so far as of today, uh, a little bit more sound than uh, Friday, for example, by the end of the week.
All right, let's take a look at volatility. See if we can get a similar story here. So volatility from what we can see here is uh, lower lows, lower highs for TVIX. When you look at this trend, I've talked about in the past how if we get close to the 20, the typical pattern for this is rejections near the 20. Today we made an all-time low for TVIX. Followed, so this is a lower low. This continues to be a lower high. This is still downtrending. So uh, still pattern continues. Look for lower numbers for TVIX and volatility, which bodes well for uh, broad markets. Nothing too much has changed from the previous analysis, which is why I haven't really done an update video. Uh, for example, if the tone starts changing from bullish to bearish, I'll you know come back to YouTube and you know give an update as to what's going on. <laughs> but if the tone hasn't really shifted too much, then the last video is valid until it's not. Crude oil, as you can see, crude oil is below all the major moving averages, but we're trying to push above. Uh, so, so what you can see here is crude oil actually has been moving in a pretty nice uh, pattern. We have a series of red candles and we've got a series of green candles. So I think the major point here is first, get above the, all the moving averages. That's positive sign for crude oil. Positive number one, it can do it. So it just, uh, it's got to go over the value of 57.66 and close above that. Number two, we'll be watching for this peak over here of around 61.34 uh, as the resistance. So once it pushes above that, we'll look for that area as a resistance. As you can see, crude oil has been making a higher high. So we expect a break of the higher high and then we'll see that if that trend is going to reverse back down. But today, again, pretty solid day for crude oil going into the moving averages. Now it just needs to push over those moving averages, which I think it can. So that's for crude oil. Natural gas. Natural gas, uh, so far, you can see these rejections playing out. But natural gas, um, you know, we, we've got support down here. There, there was our final support of 2.24. We held it on 722, which was yesterday, Monday. So we held the support. As long as we hold over this support, it's still looking okay, but we're getting to the edge. And what I mean by going to the edge is if this support doesn't hold, here is another support at 2.194. And if that level doesn't hold, we're just going to be making a lower low, and that's going to be problematic for natural gas. But right now, we've held the support right now. And uh, if this want to reverse, I'd like to see us push over the 20 at a minimum. Uh, the 20 is 2.334, so closing above that level would be short-term positive. Um, so I think it can do that. Where's your resistance? Well, you have a lot of resistance everywhere. I think the most notable resistance is the blue line 50 period. Why do we rely on technicals so much? Well, the reason is a lot of the charts do play by technicals. And what I mean by that is if you look at this rather predictable pattern 50 period rejection 20 period rejection 50 period rejection if we just scroll on to the right 50 period rejection and then now we're over here so you know if we we expect these support levels to fail we expect rejection otherwise we expect to move back higher i said it's a good it's a better chance for this to move higher reason is we've got some signals here over here, over here, over here, of some major support levels coming up. So one of those levels should hold for natural gas. That is the reason. In the past, we haven't had that great of a signal for natural gas. This time, it has a better chance. Whether this signal will reverse and play out to the upside and break over the 50 period moving average uh, is to be seen. And thank you everyone for watching this video. There's a couple of things that you can do if you like this video. Remember, you can always hit the thumbs up or the like button. The second thing is to subscribe to this channel when I post a new video. That would be greatly appreciated. I love seeing everyone here in all of your comments, so keep it coming. Post your tickers that you want me to analyze. Uh, if you post your tickers, I will analyze them or one of those tickers next time around. Okay? And... Uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I will talk to everyone again very soon when things uh, start picking up. All right, have a great day.